experience with Kayun coaching, I guess having like a, a greater conscience like kind of guide you through. First it was nerve wracking because you know, it's a pro watching me, you know, like I know I have to perform, I want to do well, you know. It's refreshing to kind of see if you're on the same path as them, but also it's good to have someone kind of peeking over your shoulder. It really is, it, it's like a, a chess game, really. You want to create that space for yourself using your, your building as pawns. All right guys, so for this session, I kind of want to focus on like building tactics, uh, the decisions that go around building it, in a competitive environment. You know, normally you're stuck in a one by one. There's a lot of decisions you need to make. Am I going to put a ramp here? Am I going to use a pyramid here? Obviously, you, everyone knows the, the basics. You know, you, you build a one by one, pyramid, pyramid. You're protected now. And with this, you can turn this into a ramp, get double cover, you can do it the other way if they're approaching you from the front. So in what cases, instead of a pyramid, would you have a ramp there? When you have the time to put down a pyramid, you always want to have a pyramid because it's yeah. just so much more versatile. But in the situation where someone's pushing you, pyramid is not the best option because you know you got to put it down and then edit it. Yeah. Pressure him by like you know double ramping up, scissor ramping, just confuse him overall. You, if you have the chance to take high ground, you know do, do your 90s, yeah. try to take high ground and then just chill here. Poke him, poke him a bit, but most of the time you're not gonna get high ground back against a good player. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna scissor up, you're gonna bait him by pretending to go up, and then you're gonna go back down and just play low ground, you know? So you have to play around other people's builds. If you see one of these tunnels, sneak in under, easy rotate, saves you a lot of mats. A lot of what you're gonna be using is based off what your opponents are using. So if you're fighting someone and he's using wood, it's probably a better idea to switch to using brick or metal because once you kill him, he's gonna have used all of his wood and he's still gonna have brick and metal in his reserve. So once you kill him, you're, you're gonna replenish yeah. your mats back. I never thought about that because that's a really small thing, you know? Like you don't really think about, oh, I should pay attention to what they're using because it's gonna affect what I get from them. You know, I just, I didn't really put that together. Emphasis on making sure you have mats to get it to, to get to the very end. All right, our team's gonna go ahead and go into some matches. Uh, what I want you guys to focus on in these matches is just learning how to communicate effectively together. Uh, I'm playing for high ground, I'm playing for low ground. Uh, I wanna play aggressive, are you ready? Definitely communication is super important. I'm gonna go mid. Six here, I'm gonna go gas station, pump here. Okay. I'm gonna go doghouse. My guy's above you. Yeah. yeah, you should group on him. There's a pump in here. We got one already. There's a pump here. He's going to West House. Oh, there's an elite agent on West House. Trying to farm a little bit. I'm gonna push west. Okay. Still above us. Yeah, yeah. The backside. There's a guy coming here. The gas station. West, west. Guy on dog with a sniper. Help you do it, help you do it. I got him. Some 22. Nice. One more on me. I'm with you. So mechanically, above. the above duo it. that I'm coaching around, right nice. absolutely insane. One more. Definitely a lack yeah, of communication. You'd have a player fighting a guy at gas station and then another player player fighting a guy at the residentials and they're just like not on the same page. I have no mats. Can you knock him down? We're under him, right? Got him. You, you suggested, can you knock him down? And then there was no response after that. The immediate response should have been, no, I'm gonna play for height, or yes, I'm gonna chop it down. What you wanna do is play kind of this baity, kitey game. Go for high ground, get back, heal. Go for high ground again, make him think that you wanna fight, but you're not. You're just creating space for yourself so then you can actually heal. If one duo tells the other duo, I'm building for height, you both shouldn't be building for height at the same time. There should always be one guy shooting as a supporting role, and the other guy applying pressure by building. So while you know that they're in, in a fight right now, this is the perfect time to just go in and clean up. Walking. Back again, back again, back. Ready? Yep. Go. That was good communication. I got Diego. We can just run him. Yeah. Knock him down, knock him down. I have height. He's in a headshot. Kind of back left. Shooting him down. He's down. The other one's below me, I think. I'm 47. I'm above him. Where's the other guy? Oh, he's right here. Oh, Hello? he's down. He's down, down. I'm with you. Nice. Got him. So that fight was a little weird because uh, your partner didn't know that the enemy was down. He was asking throughout that fight, is there a guy below me? Is there a guy below me? And there was just no response. He was like, you need to communicate. And I was like, you know what? I do need to communicate, but it's hard. You know, I'm so used to playing solo. Though. And so it was an adjustment for me. But once we got the ball rolling, it was it was a good time. Guy right here in front of me, balloons. It's flying in there. You know, 44 on the left. He's being, he's white. Uh, oh, I'm still here. On me, West as well. I'm low. I got the guy on the left, pressuring. 
you below you? Yeah, I think so. I'm pushing this guy off of you. He rotated out, he rotated out. I got one of them right here. This guy's on the left on the left side. Oh, yeah, you got the weak 88, one. 88. No shield. Got him. Nice. Were we getting third party? Or was that just me? Uh, it was just teammate. It's dynamite. Careful, turtle. Can. can you get to me? Can you get to me? Yeah, I'm trying. Shield for you here. Okay. Ramp down to double layer. Since they're throwing explodes at you. You can push on him, he's by himself. Okay, ready? Yep. Got me. No. Tax so, break. Yeah, uh, if your partner is building for high ground, you as the duo want to try to apply pressure to the opponent that is trying to build. If you're if you're shooting his walls, you're shooting his floors, he's gonna have a really hard time actually trying to build for high ground. If your teammate loses height, you both lose height pretty much. So it's really crucial to keep the opponent um, below your teammate, figuring out who is going to do which role is really going to benefit your, your squad as a whole. I felt like I was watching two solo players try to talk to each other in this early game fight in Greasy. Like immediately you guys both spot this this guy and then Debris goes to the gas station and then you go to fight the guy at the house. You're both taking two solo fights when you should be fighting one guy together, focusing him down and then moving on to the next target. Initially, both of you were focused on the balloon guy. That was good focus. He drops immediately. And then here's the split in target focus. You see right here, you're shooting the guy at the rock and then Debrisk is shooting the guy down here. And you guys are both shooting completely different targets. There were so many times where we were just focusing different enemies, and we could have easily taken out one or the other if both of us were just focused on one or the other. It's like a very easy way to start doing this is literally just commentary of every single thing you're doing. There needs to be this, this constant information flow so that you can keep on making decisions. You actually did something really good at the end here. Even though you guys both died, uh, I think you communicated, this guy's by himself, want to push him, and then you bounce back, yeah, let's do it. All the times they were aggressive, they normally caught the guys off guard, took off like 80 HP before they actually engage in the fight, which is good. Obviously, you both are very mechanically skilled. When you guys did ask each other questions and bounce off each other, you guys made very good decisions and played very well. Actively thinking about questions to ask, asking about rotations, or just knowing what to ask at the right time. Communication overall. Speak to your partner because they're the ones who's gonna help you out and, and help you get the win.